Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. We got another projector in for review. This one is the BenQ V7050i. All right, so let's get this thing unboxed and see what we get inside. Lately, I've been on a roll with these projectors. This is like the fourth one that I got in. You have two versions of this. You have the 7050i and the 7000i. The big difference is the 7000i is white. This guy here we have is gonna be black. So inside the box, we have warranty information. We have the accessories box, which inside has the smart streaming stick which does officially run on Android, Google TV. We have a USB cable, the remote control for the smart stick. This is the full remote control that controls the projector and all of its functions. Two batteries, one for the small remote, one for the big remote. And then we get some documentation, user manual and all that good stuff. And we also get the power cord. So this is uh, pretty heavy. This weighs 22 pounds. It's uh, fairly large, so check that out. That's actually pretty nice. Dimensions, it's 19 inches wide by 15 inches deep by 6.2 inches in height. So you can see up top here, I believe this, this whole thing slides back. I think it's motorized, so I'm not gonna push it back, but this thing is gonna, whole thing is gonna slide back. That's where the lens is. So that's a pretty nice touch because if it's uh, up top there, you know, some of these ultra short throws will collect dust and this will keep the lens nice and clean. So up top, we do have that, the whole sliding top. We have the HDR badge logo. We have the power button right there, which is touch sensitive. Up front, we have the speakers. They're both five watt speakers, BenQ's own Travolo speakers. And then you get the, uh, the BenQ badge right there. On the sides, you get your your intake and then your exhaust on the sides. There is two USB ins on this side there. So if you want to power like a smart stick or something like that, you can do that. On the rear, we have your power input, optical output, RS-232, another USB type A, two HDMI inputs, one that does support ARC. On the bottom of the projector, there are adjustable feet. So if you want to level this, you can just unscrew and screw down the feet. You can do that for the front and the back. And this also is not ceiling mountable, so you cannot mount this on your ceiling. Brightness wise, this will give you 25,000 anti lumens. There are some other cool features in it. It does have a six segment color wheel does have dynamic light dimming for HDR tone mapping. That's basically where the laser will dim the light, either brighter for bright scenes and then darker for dark scenes. And of course, this does cover 98% of DCI P3 color space. Since it's laser, lamp life is rated for 20,000 hours. It uses the TI.47 DMD with XPR technology to display 8.3 million pixels on screen for true 4K UHD resolution. For setup, this is going in my dedicated theater that's totally light controlled for a pitch black environment. I'll be projecting on a Stuart film screen Harmony G2 at about 7 inches away. Putting the projector in this kind of room with no lights is going to give you the absolute best performance with this projector. Now to get the smart features going, you will have to use the included smart stick. Just plug it into any of the HDMI ends and connect the USB for power. All right, so now that the smart stick is all set up, let's check out some of the projector's settings. Tap on the menu on the remote control, and this should bring up all your options. The first section is gonna be your picture options. We'll come back around and check this out when we're playing some content. Next section is your display. So you have options for overscan, 3D, HDR, auto, or off, silence. By turning this on, this will drop the fan noise on the projector, but it's also going to dim the overall brightness as well. So if you want maximum brightness, I would suggest you turn that off. Next section is installation. For projector position, you have either front or you have rear. There is no option to ceiling mount, so it's either front or rear only. Next option is motor focus. This is where you can adjust the focus of the projector. 
test pattern, you can turn this on or off to adjust the geometry of your screen. Aspect ratio, you have either 16 by 9, 4 by 3, or you can keep it on auto. High altitude mode will ramp up the fan to keep the projector cool, but then that's going to increase the fan noise. Auto Keystone will automatically keystone the projector on its own, or if you want to manually keystone it, you can tap up, which will bring the bottom of the screen inwards. Hold two seconds to reset it, or if you tap down, it'll start angling the top of the screen inwards. Obviously, you don't want to use digital keystoning because, as you can see, you have a lot of dead pixels or unused pixels on the corners now, so that will cut into the 4K resolution. The more keystoning you use, the less pixels you're going to be using, which effectively turns this 4K projector into something like 3.5K or even less the more keystone that you're using. So the best option is to square the projector up with your screen or your wall to get the full resolution. Next section is the system setup. This is the basic options where you have language settings. So you get a bunch of languages. Background color, you can select from black, blue, purple, or back to black. Splash screen, you have either BenQ, black, blue, and then back to BenQ. Auto off, you have anywhere from 30 minutes down to five minutes. Direct power setting on or off. Menu settings let you reposition the menu. You can choose between either center, top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left, and back to center. Menu display timeout, you can keep it always on or drop it down to five seconds, 10 seconds, 15, 20, 25, or 30. Under source rename, you can rename your inputs. Auto source select will automatically change to the selected HDMI or input source once you plug in a new device. Under sound options, we'll come back and check out some of these options here once we start playing some content. Eye protection turns on the sensor, so if you happen to pass in front of the projector, the laser will automatically shut off so you don't accidentally blind yourself. You can keep that on or you can keep it off. The next section is the advanced section. For light source settings, you get your light source timer. This will show you how many hours are on your lamp. Next setting is the HDMI settings. For HDMI format, you have either auto, RGB limited, or RGB full. Here you have the HDMI equalizer, HDMI EDID, which you have options for a 2.0 or 1.4. If you do want 4K HDR material to work properly, you will have to keep it on HDMI 2.0. Under electronic control, this is basically HDMI CEC, which you can use to control other devices or your other devices can control the projector. Under password, you can assign a password to lock out all the settings from being changed. LED indicator will turn on or off the LED light on the top of the power button. And in the last section is your information section, which gives you details about your source, picture mode, dynamic range, resolution, color system, etc. Let's check out some of the more popular apps and see if 4K HDR content works. First app being Amazon Prime Video. Although once we click play and then hit the menu button and under information, it says it's playing back in 4K but only in SDR. So even though it says HDR within the app, it's actually only sending SDR. So let's back on out of this and jump into the Disney Plus app. Under the Rise of Skywalker, this does support 4K, HDR10 and 5.1. Under the information, it does support HDR10 and 4K60. So it doesn't look like it's playing back in 4K24. Let's go ahead and jump on out of this and head over to the YouTube app. Once again, you can see in the upper corner there, it does say 4K, 60 Hertz. And under the current video quality settings, it does support 4K60 HDR. So 4K HDR does work within the YouTube app. Now the one big app that is missing is Netflix. At the time of this video, Netflix is not certified for this specific device. If you do want to get Netflix working, BenQ does recommend that you go to your web browser, cast from your web browser over to the projector. So that is the only way, unless you want to hook up an external streaming device like an Apple TV or a Roku to it. But at the time of this video, Netflix is not supported right now for the BenQ. Let's check out some of the picture settings now. Under picture mode, you have two settings. You have HDR10 or filmmaker mode. Let's check out HDR10 first. So in this section here, you can adjust your brightness, contrast, color, tint, and sharpness. These are at their default settings, by the way. Under advanced, 
you have HDR brightness, which you have at either negative two, or if you want to max it out, you can go to plus two. As you can see at plus two, the overall image brightness does get a lot brighter, although the black levels do suffer, so your contrast levels also take a hit as well. See at negative two, the picture is not quite as bright, but the black levels, the shadow detail, the contrast, everything does pop a lot more. Jumping back to plus two, the entire image loses a lot of contrast, black levels suffer, the image doesn't pop as much, and just the overall picture looks washed out. For me personally, I like to keep it at zero, which is the medium ground between a really bright image and a nice contrasty image. Under color temperature, you've got normal, cool, lamp native, warm, and back to normal. Next section is your color management, which you can change the hue, saturation, and gain of your primary colors, red, green, and blue. Under Cinema Master, you've got Color Enhancer, which at default is at zero. This is at 18, and back to zero. Flesh Tone at max, and then at negative five. You can see it at max, it gets a little, little orange. Pixel Enhancer 4K is basically just like a sharpening setting. At max at 15, everything's really kind of noisy, overly sharpened. By default, it is set to five, or if you don't want to use it at all, you're going to keep it at zero. Under Motion Enhancer, you have two options for high or you have off. So if you do want that soap opera effect, you can change the settings here for that. Under Brilliant Color, right now we're at 10, but if we drop it all the way down to zero, you can see the image takes a little bit hit in brightness, not quite as punchy looking. Still really good at zero, but if you do want to get the maximum punch out of it and the most colorful image possible out of what you're watching, then you might like, you might like to keep it at 10. For wide color gamut, if you turn this on, this will put the color filter into place. You can see here with it on, the overall image brightness takes a hit, so the picture is a bit dimmer, although this will give you a better, wider spectrum of color, so better, smoother color gradations all the way through the image, but you are going to take a hit in brightness. If you want to use this during the daytime with an ambient light rejecting screen, I would recommend you keep that off for the maximum brightness. It'll still look fantastic, but if you do want to get more accurate colors, then you'd want to keep this on for more cinematic, almost filmic look. Also, the picture tends to take a little hit in sharpness. Keeping this on gives the picture an almost cinematic, almost softer look to it. I wouldn't say soft where it's not razor sharp, but it looks less digital and looks a bit more organic if you turn the wide curly gamut filter on. Again, this is a personal preference. You might like it on or you might like it off. And under light mode is where you can turn on and off the dynamically dimming light. Now, if you want the laser dimming to work properly, you're going to have to put it on Smart Eco. For this scene here, if you keep your eye on the overall brightness of the screen, once the Star Wars logo fades off the screen, the overall brightness will continue to remain the same. If we switch over to Smart Eco, as the Star Wars logo kind of fades into the background, you should see the screen dim down right there and get even dimmer and then brighten up when episode, episode 9 pops up. You may be sensitive to seeing the actual screen dimming down. If that bothers you, then I would recommend you keep it on normal for the maximum brightness. Although your black levels will not be as good as if you kept it on Smart Eco. And the last section here is filmmaker mode. Once you turn this on, this turns off all the digital processing and all the picture processing in the image is supposed to give you the most accurate way to watch the movies. So you can see here, this is still at all the default settings at 50, but now sharpness is down to zero and under advanced, you can go down to Cinemaster and everything here is turned off. So color enhancer is off, flesh tone is off, pixel enhancer is off and motion enhancer is off. And by default, your color gamut should be turned on. So if you want the most accurate way to watch these movies, it is recommended that you choose filmmaker mode. As for the picture quality, this has got to be one of the brightest ultra short throw projectors I've seen. I think it's even brighter than the JVC projector that I have in here now. In fact, I know it's a lot brighter. For HDR material, you can see here in Luca, everything here just pops. It's got great color saturation. The motion is nice. The resolution is super crisp. It is razor sharp. Maybe the sharpest picture I've seen yet. This is right up there with the LG HU85 ultra short throw projector. The black levels are nice, contrast levels are super nice, and just 
overall, the picture looks quite amazing. As for darker movies and black levels, this is a DLP projectors and everybody knows that DLPs don't have the best black levels. Even if you turn on Smart Eco with its laser light dimming mode, the blacks still tend to look a bit grayish, they're a bit raised. You can see here in this dark scene that everything does tend to skew a little bit grayer. I do like the Smart Eco mode, but I do not like how it dims the entire picture down on really dark scenes like this. But as far as HDR with this dark material, you can see that the, the bright highlights, the specular highlights pop. I mean, there is good shadow detail. It's not as good as like a JVC or a Sony. But, you know, for this price point and this DLP projector, I mean, there's really nothing to complain about. If you're not some true video file that needs the deepest, inkiest blacks, I think this is going to be more than enough to satisfy what you need to enjoy your 4K movies. Now, if you do want to use this with an ambient light rejecting screen for daytime use, you can use something like the Elite Screen's Kestrel Tab Tension Dark UST or the Vivid Storm Fluorizing Screens. The BenQ is bright enough to use during the daytime with the lights shining through the windows or with the lights on. The colors aren't going to be as good as they'd be with the lights off, but it's usable. Darker content will be harder to see, so for that, you'd want to keep it dim or totally dark. Working. You're getting slow in your old age, huh? Comes to us all, Master Wayne. Even you got too old to die young. And not for lack of trying. Funnel fairy bottle bar, funnel fairy bottle bar, funnel fairy bottle bar, funnel fairy. There's nothing wrong with the microphone. There's this new layer of armor. I just have to rewire. So. Last night was productive. Nope. It's too low level. He knew nothing. This is a man who knows things. All right, so we just made these couple of guys quit in Rocket League. Again, me being a season three tournament winner and season two, I know what this game is supposed to feel like. And I know that based off of my BenQ monitor. It's a gaming level, you know, tournament grade monitor that has about eight milliseconds of input lag when it comes to the HDMI input at 1080p. So that's my reference. That's how I know what feels right, what doesn't feel right. I know how much I have to adjust to a particular display once I pick up the controller and start playing. When it comes to the BenQ, this particular model, there is a little bit more of an adjustment that I have to make for gaming because it does have a little bit more input lag than I would like. Now, I'm not gonna say that this is a bad projector. This is a fantastic projector because the image quality is among the best that I've tested. However, if you want that multimedia projector, something that you can do everything plus games, you can do everything. I wouldn't recommend gaming on it. It doesn't even have a game mode. And I think they understand that know, and know that. BenQ, if you're listening out there and you want to make this projector the best all around, implement that game mode with a firmware update. I know you guys know how to, I know you guys know about gaming. Again, I use your monitor to play. I've won season two and season three tournaments on Rocket League because of your monitor. I would love to have an ultra short throw projector that looks amazing just like this does and plays games. At the time of this video, the BenQ V7050i is selling for $4,000. Now, there is one quirk I had while using the projector. There's times while starting a movie that the screen would get stuck and start flashing purple. The way to get out of it was to stop the movie and restart it. This could be an HDMI handshake issue, though I'm not exactly sure, but I did feel it was worth mentioning. Also, this being a DLP projector, if you're sensitive to it, you will occasionally see the rainbow effect. We noticed it more while playing video games since your eyes are constantly going back and forth rapidly, but it wasn't really an issue while watching movies or TV shows. That being said, for $4,000, I think this is the ultra short throw projector to get. It's an amazingly bright ultra short throw projector, and it's one of the best I've seen. It's incredibly sharp with a picture so clean you might mistake it for an LED TV. Oh, and bonus, 3D playback is supported. Now if you guys do want to grab the 7050, I'll leave a link for it down below in the video's description. 
So tell us your thoughts on these ultra short throw projectors. Do you guys have one or would you guys consider getting one? Let us know in the comments down below. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you again in the next video.